It says, uh, then Samuel took a vial of oil and poured it upon his head and kissed him and said, is it not because the Lord hath anointed thee to be captain over his inheritance? Then Samuel took a vial of oil and poured it upon his head and kissed him and said, is it not because the Lord hath anointed thee to be captain over his inheritance? Verse 6 says it like this. It says, And the Spirit of the Lord will come upon thee, and thou shalt prophesy with them, and shalt be turned into another man. And verse 10 says, And when they came thither to the hill, behold, a company of prophets met him. And the Spirit of God came upon him, and he prophesied among them. Saul is who the subject is, and he has lost his father's asses, and he is looking for them, and he is trying to find them, and he could not find the donkeys that had wandered away from his house. And so he goes and he says, I'm going to talk to the prophet and find out where my donkeys are. So he walks up to Samuel after he gets the directions, and he wants to know, he says, have you seen the asses of my father that have got loose from their pens. And the prophet says, I want you to come up and eat with me, and I have a word of the Lord to speak to you. And so at a certain given time, the prophet Samuel takes a vial of oil, and he puts it on the head of Saul, and he anoints him to be king over Israel. First thing that I want to say about this, there are a lot of great aspects of this, but there's something about coming in contact with a man of God that is full of the Holy Ghost and under the direction of God. It is important that a church have a pastor, have ministers, have preachers that come through, that have a touch of the Holy Ghost, have a divine call. Because when they have that call, they are able to deliver a word of the Lord. They are able to give direction for lives. They are able to give stability in people's uh, uh, callings that are upon them. And so it was when Saul walked into this man's life who was a prophet, the prophet poured oil on his head and something happened in him. Then the prophet talked to him a little bit and it wasn't much longer till the prophet told him, said, Saul, I want to tell you something about what happened to you. In your near future, the Spirit of the Lord is going to come upon you and when the Spirit of the Lord comes upon you, you are going to prophesy. You are going to speak things that you've never spoke before. You are going to do things that you've never done before. In fact, you are going to be a different man than you are now. Praise God. You're not going to be the same Saul that everyone has known as you've grown up. They know you're up. Risings, they know your down sittings, they know your faults and your failures, you're good, you're bad, you're ugly, all of that about you. But when the Spirit of the Lord gets on you, something is going to change in you that's going to make you different than you are right now. Praise God. And so Saul, he, he heard this, he heard the word of the Lord, and he went on his way, and on his way, the Bible says he met a company of prophets. Now, there's something special about this. It pays to run with the right people. Let me say that again. It pays to run with the right people. You know what company is? It's someone that comes into your life for a while. Company is someone that moves in and surrounds you, partakes of food at your table, sleeps in your house, so becomes like an extended family that becomes near and close. And they talk to you and fellowship with you. They are different than just someone you meet on the street, just a casual passerby. -er. And the Bible says that a company of prophets and Saul got together. And when the company got with Saul, Saul had the anointing, and they began to prophesy under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. I want to tell someone in short today, in just the next few minutes, that when God filled you with the Holy Ghost, He came to change your way of living. The song said it right. 
It said he come to change my mind. He come to change my heart. He come to change my feet. He came to change my tongue. He came to change everything about me because there's something about the power of the Holy Ghost when it comes into a life. And I want to tell somebody today that you do not have to be what you were before you come to God. And you don't have to be what you've been while you've been sitting on the pew trying to figure out what the difference between the Holy Ghost and not having the Holy Ghost is in your life. I want you to know that the Holy Ghost makes you a new creature in Christ Jesus. And it gives you the power to speak words you've never spoke before. It gives you the power to live a life that you've never lived a life. It gives you a power to live overcoming and to be something in the kingdom of God. Now, I know some of you are acting like you're tired this morning. Well, I'm tired too. And some of you acting like we're not coming to have church. We just come to make it through so we go out and have the barbecue or dinner. But I'm going to tell you, we're not going to do that today. We come to have a move of God. I say we come to have a move of God. We come to get touched by God. And if you feel the old dead dry bones in your skeleton today, you need to get under the spout where the glory comes out and let the Holy Ghost get on you and make a difference in your life. There's no need to come and have dead dry church when God's in the place. We need to have a move of the Holy Ghost. That's right. We need a move of God. And I, I just feel like getting a little beside myself or maybe catching up with myself, however you want to say it. But I, I don't like to come to church and have to prime the pump in so many dead, dry skeletons sitting on the pew. I wish somebody come with their bucket of water, come with water flowing out their spout, come full of the Holy Ghost, say, hey, Pastor, I come from a prayer meeting where I got to church. Uh, I've been talking to somebody about the Lord. Uh, I've got a move of God on fire in my soul. I'm not what I was a Sunday ago, but I feel the glory this morning, and I come to release it in praise and minister to somebody that needs it. I come to be a new man in Christ Jesus and let the Holy Ghost have its way in my life. Oh, hallelujah. I don't want to talk the way I used to talk. I don't want to live the way I used to live. I don't want to be the way I used to be. But I want my life to be on fire. I want my soul to catch fire with the power of the Holy Ghost. I want to recognize what God has done when He put His Spirit within me, when He touched me with His anointing, when He baptized me with a special gift of life like I never had prior to my experience with Christ. I want to be different in those around me, to be the same and to feel the same and to walk in the same. I want company in the move of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, hallelujah. I like people that are on fire for God. I like to get around people that shake and shimmer a little bit. I like to get around people whose lips stutter a little bit and their tongue gets to bouncing up and down and, and they get to talking about the things of God and, and out just comes a burst of the Holy Ghost. Uh, they can't contain it because it's like fire shut up in their bones. Uh, there's something about them that's different. Uh, they know how to walk in the Holy Ghost. Uh, they know how to live in the anointing that God put on them. They know how to live in what God said they were and they took hold of the promises of God and they ain't been the same since God. God anointed them. Oh, hallelujah. 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 There's some people you get around that they just drain it out of you. They belong to the leech club. I mean, they get on you and they begin to suck you dry. They begin to pull out all of the energy. They begin to pull out all of the happiness. They begin to pull out all of the excitement. They have an excuse why God can't do this. And they have an excuse why they won't do this. And they come with their lip dragging the carpet. And they come to church with an attitude in their heart and on their shoulder saying that God owes me something. And if the church did this or if God did this, I'm going to tell you, you need to do something with what God has already given you. God touched you. I come to tell you, God touched you. 
And when God touches you, it makes a difference in your life. What some of you need to do is respond to the touch of the living God and quit expecting God to do anymore till you start doing something back to God called praise and worship. Uh, and let a prophecy come out. And a tongues come out. Uh, and a song come out. Uh, and a testimony come out. That God is good and God has done what He said He would do in my life.